I want to clarify first a question of language because you spoke about generalized AI. You spoke about artificial general intelligence. So what's the difference here? Clarify for people listening. Yeah, so you know, for me, like generalization is much more of an emphasis, right? Going beyond <coughs> narrow generalization between training and test data of the same distribution to more broader generalization. Uh, whereas AGI, at least among the public, tends to be confused to human level intelligence. So to avoid that confusion, you know, it's you, mostly... You shifted <laughs> the language. Yes. <laughs> Generalized artificial intelligence. You didn't shift it. But probably you have a different definition of AGI than what the general public has. Yeah, I mean, AGI is, I think, as Anima said, it is, what is important is um, for these algorithms to be really general algorithms, to be able to solve multiple problems, not, what just, not just one problem. And when faced with a new problem, to be able to transfer their knowledge into solution of that problem. So yes, I agree with Anima that like generalization in the really um, extended sense. Um, I like to keep using that term because I think it's a precise technical term. And I, I agree that there is some confusion, but hopefully with forums like this, we can actually resolve those confusions okay. too. Konai, of those challenges you have identified at the end, uh, causality, time, and so on, do they need to be tackled all at the same time? Or is there one that's priority because that will help solve the other or so? How do you go after that? Um, like they don't need to be tackled at the same time. But obviously, I think we need to do research on all of them as much as possible. Most of the time, one finding in one problem actually translates to the other one. It gives us more traction in many other problems that we do. But these are all important problems that we should continue working on. Because um, at least with our understanding currently, these are important um, sort of bottlenecks that we need to be able to um, improve our, our research on. Yeah. So there is the whole aspect about you know, taking data from the real world and, and, and using it in, in the system, et cetera. But you mentioned something midway in your talk that, that uh, I found uh, striking. You talked about consciousness. And the way you talked about it, you said consciousness is a key element of generalized AI. Does that mean that we need to understand consciousness before being able to get into generalized AI? Because we don't understand it now. Indeed, Bruno, I think there are many theories around consciousness and we still don't understand the mechanisms in the brain, but I think it's commonly agreed in the neuroscience community that feedback is an important aspect of it, right? So we are consulting with our internal model in the brain of some sort to ask, is this consistent with the external signals we are getting? So that kind of inspiration could help us build uh, better AI models. So I'm talking at that abstract level rather than the actual mechanisms that drive consciousness. Okay, something way more down to earth and practical, the uh, AI for Science uh, initiative it started in 2018, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So what has happened? What, what has it achieved in the time that has passed? Yeah, I mean, Caltech is a unique place to house AI for Science because it's a small community, very collegial, and we have the world's expert in so many scientific domains, Nobel Prize winners, but they're willing to disrupt their own methods to bring AI and see these gains. So bringing these people together, having interdisciplinary collaborations happen, have workshops, we have machine learning graduate students volunteer their time every week, and you know, have these interactions that can then lead to uh, very interesting results, like what we see with solving partial differential equations or quantum chemistry. So it requires really building the bridge and having the common language of math as well as machine learning come together. Is it localized only at Caltech or do you collaborate with others? Can it be exported somewhere else? Yeah, so it's also broader than that, uh, you know, especially through my NVIDIA collaborations, we have connections with different national labs, universities, so it's really bringing everybody together. Okay. Kurai, one last question for you, because I am interested in your example about weather forecast with the Met Office. Uh, essentially, what you say is we have a ton of past data. Because we have a ton of past data, we can actually really create models that allow us to be incredibly granular for whatever period of time you showed two hours, but it probably can be, can be longer. The problem is that the climate is changing, the weather patterns are changing. And so 
and yet we are basing the models on old data. Uh, how do you adjust for that? Because you know, just in the last summer, we have had examples of floods in Germany that were not predicted even one hour before, for example. So if the actual real life situation changes and doesn't map on the past data anymore, what do you do? Well, excellent question. I think there are two things there. One of them is there are different time scales that these changes happen. And the data that we rely on actually can be shifted forward because it is operating in the very small time scale. But more importantly, what you are pointing to is actually an excellent problem, which one of the fundamental problems that I mentioned about like transfer learning efficiently, being able to continue your learning, not necessarily just train something as a snapshot in time, but actually a model that can continually ingest data and continuously update its model and learn from. That is another big challenge that a lot of research is going in today. Okay, Anima, Koray, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.